Paul McShane, good evening to you. Good evening, Adrian. How are you? How are you keeping? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Am I right about just outside Manchester somewhere? Uh, yeah, somewhere there, yeah. <laughs> not not too specific. You don't want to give too much away. That's fair enough. The last time... The last yeah, I mean, time... I'm in Worsley. I'm in Worsley. Worsley the, right. the last time we were chatting was about two years ago. You were sat opposite me here in the studio at very different times. How have been the last sort of six, seven months for you? Um, yeah, it's been... Well, it's, it's been a bit strange um, with, with no fans and stuff and everything that's going on in the world. But, you know, you have to you have to just adapt and, um, and, and crack on. Yeah. The, we, we'll, I want to talk a little bit about the club stuff and there's lots of stuff to chat to you about, actually, um, as long as you're happy enough to chat away, of course. Um, and we will get to the Ireland-England stuff maybe in a little bit. But uh, it only dawned on me today that you, I think if I'm right, haven't actually officially retired from international duty. No, I've not officially retired. No, I've always, I always said in the past that I would, I would always let Ireland retire me. So I've never ever um, shut the door on Ireland. But um, you know, I think it's pretty much, you know, just about shut now. But um, yeah, I'd never actually officially retire. Um, so yeah, I'd, um, you know, if I if I ever got the call up again, I'd I, I'd jump at it because you know I've I've always been I've always been committed to the to the country over the years, and I. I've always loved playing for the country, so um, yeah, I've never, I've never fully, fully closed that door. Does that? Um, I know when we last chatted, it was a conversation about knocking on Alex Ferguson's door to tell him you were available. Has there been so that that not closing the door? Is that just a we'll wait and see, or is it like a dropping a cheeky text here or there, or letting people know that you're about? Um, no, you know, I'm just, I'm just gonna play me football now. Um, I'm gonna try and enjoy the last few years and. Um, just, just let the process, the natural process, happen. I don't want to start, you know, ringing, ringing people's phones and stuff, and, and wanting to call up. But you know, I think it's, uh, you know, it's the, the the Irish team have 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 moved on, and um, yeah, you know, I just I, I I wish the lads all the best. But yeah, as I've never, I'm never really gonna come out and and make a, a big uh, retire retirement announcement. As I said, I'm always gonna let let Ireland uh, retire me. It was the one thing that I thought was slightly bizarre about David McGoldrick's retirement this week, and even more so almost in the absence of Aaron Connolly now, that, like, I mean, I don't know, none of us maybe know fully what's going on in the background, but why would you not just hang on? Like, there might be a job to be done. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to have an opinion on that because you just don't, you just don't know what's happening in, in people's lives. You don't know what's going on in the background uh, with personal stuff and family. But I, I did. I was I was quite surprised at it myself when I when I seen it on my phone. Um, I thought the last the last two games, Didzy had really. I think he turned into the main man for me. He uh, he looked very dangerous in games and looked like things were going to happen through him. So I thought it was just a bit yeah, it was a bit disappointing then to, for him to come out with his with his retirement. But as I said, you just don't know what's going on. You don't know how his body is on a on a day to day basis at the club and. Um, yeah, it's 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 a tough one. I think it's probably a tough one to take for fans as well. And as I said, it definitely it, it took me by surprise. Yeah, that seemed to be a lot of the way the conversations were going. Like he's thirty two, he's playing top level football, he's starting to score a couple of goals, and we don't have strikers, um, and that makes it all the more uh, uh, that makes it all the more tragic almost in in Irish fan um, minds, I suppose. The, your last cap, I'm right, was it uh, was the two two draw with Slovakia? Was that? 20, uh, yeah, that was my last cap. Yeah, twenty sixteen. Yep. Which, which I'm sure, is part of the reason that you want to get back in at some point and not have that as your, your last memory almost. Ah uh, no, it's you know it was, uh, it was uh, that was a, a strange game. You know, it's when I when I look back at at my Irish career of of sort of I've got my my majority of my caps um, from twenty to twenty three, so I always always wanted to get back get back in contention and you know I felt as if I was in a, in a, in a very good place um football wise for for say 6 years um you know when when you sort of you come into your own as as a center back because it's all about experience and um you know I felt I felt in a good place um but I didn't really get the the break that I wanted you know at that particular time but you know I played I played the Slovakia game and yeah, it wasn't it wasn't um, great personally. Um, so yeah, it was you know that's just just the way football is. It's it's it never really football careers don't really go to plan. 
it's it's a it's very much a, a roller coaster of up and downs, and you've you've got to roll with the punches. But you know, I've I've, I've kept going throughout my whole career, and um, uh, took took the highs with the lows, and and just cracked on. You know, in, in football, you gotta just gotta keep going. You know, finish finish the race and um, stay in the fight as long as you can. And um, yeah, that game was unfortunately probably my last cap for the for the country. But you know, I had plenty of club football uh, left in me, and um, yeah, I'm I'm still going, and hopefully, I've got a couple of more years playing. Thirty three caps is like uh, incredible and unfathomable, and in the tiny percentage of. Um, footballers who ever reach that milestone. Is it enough for you or what's your sense uh, not being retired but looking back on it now as an achievement? Um, I would have liked to have got to 100 to be honest <laughs> but it, it didn't quite didn't quite plan out like that. Um, you know I made I made my debut at, at 20 years of age um, you know which is relatively uh, young uh, so yeah I would have, would have liked to have played every game till I was 35 but um, it wasn't to be. So you know, I've got to, I've got to um, look back on my Irish career and um, with you know fond memories. I loved I loved playing for Ireland. I loved I loved you know I played in the old Lansdowne Road, which was you know a great experience. I've played in Crow Park. I've played in in the Aviva. I've played under numerous managers and learned learned loads off them. So I do you know you've got to look back and um, I'll, I'll always have have fond memories of, of playing for the country, even though it didn't did probably finish how I, how I'd like to, but you just. You know you can't you can't become too upset about things. So um, yeah, it's 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 been a it's been a good ride. When you say you said a bit earlier on about um, you just didn't get the break that you wanted, do you mean like in the international sense or the club break that that you desperately yeah. needed or what? Yeah, what was what did you mean by that? Yeah, a bit of both really. It was like um, well, I was playing in the in the Premier League and um, you know I got promoted with Hull. Um, back to the Premier League, so I thought I was in a good a good place there, but I didn't seem to. You know, the lads the lads were playing okay with Ireland at the time, and I just felt as if you know I maybe should have you know got a got a bit of a crack at it, but um, yeah, it wasn't to be. And also, you know, when I was in the Premier League with Hull, there was times when I when I wasn't wasn't in in the team, but I got back in the team and I played a lot of, a lot of games for Hull in the Premier League. So mm. um, yeah, it was. Yeah, I would have liked in that. I'd say between probably the best I felt was probably maybe be, between say twenty six and and now. Really? <laughs> so yeah, uh, you know when when I look back, I um I I wish I'd 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 got I'd got my majority of cut of caps towards the end of yeah in my twenties, but um yeah I got them at the start of my twenties and that that was that was my my journey. So um I learned I, I learned an awful lot in that time. So um yeah it was you know it's good to look back on. Yeah, I didn't actually. I wasn't aware of that that most of your caps had come so young, and like as you say, that position that people generally tend to mature into it. Was there? I'm just trying to think who was. I'm trying to think of who the manager is that you're uh, hinting at that didn't give you the break. No, no, Joe, I'm not. No, I'm not saying that I didn't get a break. Like I, you know, I got, I got, I got a a, a big break at twenty, and you know, I played under Trapattoni, and. Yeah. And there was times under Trapattoni where I was I was very frustrated because I felt as if I I should have been I should have been playing, especially the year we got promoted back to the Premier League, and um, you know I I think it came to the stage where I just I I'd had to have a few I had a few words with with uh, Trap and and Marco, um, you know I thought I thought I'd done enough to 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 start more games but um I didn't and then when when Martin took over I did have a. I did have an ankle injury. I was just recovering from a, an operation, but then when I got back fit, I felt in a in a decent place. But Martin seemed to be, he was loyal. He was very loyal to the to the lads that were in the in the initial squad for him. And um, so it took, it took me a while to actually get back into into a squad, which was I think I was twenty nine, and I was on on it was just off the back of a a, a season in the Premier League with Hull. So um, yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna moan about not getting a break you know I had, yeah. I had plenty, of, plenty of breaks but I would have would have liked to have a little bit more in that in that period where I was you know I was feeling probably the best that I'd felt was that were the few words in the euro the, during the euros campaign the um, qualifying campaign no it wasn't the euros campaign it was you know the euros campaign it was that was that was that was mental times because uh, obviously the whole 23 man squad was announced but wasn't official and then I actually ended up getting called into it and then being in the 23 man squad so 
um, you know, to be to be knocking on the door in that situation, I didn't think it was right. But because um, I wasn't playing, I wasn't playing club level at the time. I'd, I'd gone through a bit of a difficult patch with with with, with Hull. Um, he brought you in for your versatility at the eleventh hour, essentially, wasn't that it? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, yeah, it was it was uh, interesting times. What was that town in in Italy? What's that? What was the name of that town in Italy? The town in Italy. Where you remember the training camp? You you came in. They'd played, they'd played uh, one of the local teams. Yeah, and, I don't know. I don't uh, remember the. I don't remember the village. Like, don't remember it. But it was. Um, yeah, it was you know, it was, I look back and it was it was a great. It was you know, it was it was a great experience to experience a a, a tournament. Um, but you know, unfortunately, the, the results weren't great for us. And um, but it was it was just it was good because. I'd sort of when that twenty-three man squad got announced, um, you know, I I was very disappointed that that I wasn't in it. But mm. then I sort of just, I just cracked on with me summer. I didn't really think about it because if I if I got myself too down about it, I would I would have lost the head. So, um, then all of a sudden on the radio you could hear that there was um you know a few injuries and stuff. So I was thinking I've got a I've got a bit of an outside chance here. And I actually finished actually finished that season with an injury myself. I had a hamstring. But I um I actually was going to see a physio because um I just wanted to rehab my hamstring and get ready for you know for anything that was going to come my way. I just wanted to be prepared for everything. So I I, I rehab my hamstring without you know nobody really knew that I was injured. So it was it was good that I done that because when I got the call up I I made the most of it. And we played we played Bosnia in the Aviva and I think that was you know. I think I had a, I had a decent game, so that definitely put the thought in 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 the traps in Marco's head. Uh, Monte Catini was the uh, the name of that town. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. what was the uh, what, when you say you were ringing them up? What I was asking was was that in the in the qualification campaign for those Euros, or was that separate to that? What ringing ringing who up? Trap. No, I never I never rang Trap. I would never ring him. Um, it was when I had the words with him. It was I think it was after the it was after a game against Wales away. Um yeah, I saw after the game. I just had a few words just to say like you know it's, um you know I think I deserve I deserve to be playing or whatever in the yeah. in the last few months and stuff with what's gone on and um yeah it was you know it was it wasn't it wasn't much of a fall. It was a, it was a pretty it was a, it was a conversation that you you have to have I think as as a player if. If you're out of the team and you think you deserve to be playing, I think I think you do have to ask questions. Um, yeah. You have to take that that responsibility of yourself. And I know I know if I was a manager and, and a player was was asking me, you know, about starting, I'd go, yeah, start. And if you and if you and if you if yeah. you mess up, you'll be playing again. Yeah. But you know, I I was definitely trying to put put myself back in back in the pit, picture. I thought I'd do it through through performances and stuff. But if that doesn't work, then I think you gotta. You gotta to have to have a few words, and I ended up, yeah, doing that. But yeah, it wasn't. Do you know what I mean? It was I got on well with the trap, and you know, I was very grateful for his time with the country because I thought he was, you know, I thought he was brilliant for us at the start. What did he say to you? Hey, Paolo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's um, yeah, it was. You know, he's he's a passionate fella and stuff, and you know, it was this was so this was like, this was about eight years ago now, so it was um, yeah. It was, you know, it was, I, I don't really remember. Would he like? Would he welcome players coming to? Because like from the outside looking in, he seemed like somebody who was pretty. I don't know if set in his ways is necessarily the right way to put it, but like had a fairly fixed viewpoint that um, he wouldn't be easily shifted off. Would he be the type of fella that we've spoken before about you knocking on Alex Ferguson's door and you'd written your notes the night before to get your head straight about what you wanted to say? Was there a yeah. sim was it a similar scenario here, or what? What? How did you go about it? No, this was this was a bit this was a bit more off the cuff this this one. Yeah. Um yeah, I did I didn't have my notepad out that time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was it was towards the end of his, his tenure um trap, so it was um I sort of felt as if I just, you know, I I I'd had I had really nothing to lose, so I just sort of just had a few words, yeah. you know, after, after the game and stuff, but um yeah, it wasn't wasn't anything wasn't anything too juicy for you. It was uh, <laughs> pretty. It was pretty, you know, straightforward words that that happened in a change room, pro you know, on a probably weekly basis yeah. uh, up in the country. And um, but it was yeah, it wasn't it wasn't no pad stuff, you know, and and trying to predict uh, answers. It was uh, yeah, it was straightforward. Just that uh, in the moment. Yeah. 
Um, like when you look at your list of clubs, Paul, like United, West Brom, Brighton, Sunderland, Hull City, Palace, Reading, like some monster clubs in there, and you're not far off your 35th birthday, I know now, and I'm not wanting to retire you um, before you mention that, but um, when you look back, like when you look at those list of clubs and you look at the Ireland achievements, do you look back and think, Jesus, that was, what a career that was? Um, no, I don't. I don't really know because I I sort of just live in in the moment at the minute. It's like uh, I just trying. I'm just trying to play as long as I can. Yeah. Um, no, I want to. I want to finish my career on a on something. You know, I want to try and achieve something. Something more. Uh, w one last thing, whether that's whatever a, a promotion in the, in the lower leagues or a, you know a, a staying up even. Um. You know, I just I just want, I would like to be a part of something. So I've not really. You know, I, when when I suppose it's all it's all said and done, I think I'll, you know, I might sit down and have a couple of points with a few friends and look back and think like, you know, that was that, I, I think I did all right considering that initially my 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 goal was to play for Saint Joseph Boys and in, in Sally Noggin, and um, so yeah, you know, I've played some some great clubs and um, I've I've enjoyed me football. At, you know, I would you know it's it's as I said, it, football is such a roller coaster and. You probably have a lot more downs than ups, but when it's when it's up, it's you know it's it's fantastic. Mm. Um, so I'll, I'll look back at those memories, and I'll I'll definitely, you know, I've 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 had a, a you know, I've ha I'm I'm lucky to to have to have the career career that I've had, and yeah, it's um yeah it's it's it's, it's been good, but I'm just going to keep going for as long as I can. Yeah, I'm 35 in January. Um, I'll reassess at the end of the season, see see what the crack is, but I'd. Yeah, I just I would I would like to keep going as long as I can, but you know, I'll have to talk to the body at the end of the season and see what's going on. Yeah, and certainly no harm in doing that. What um, to ask in a slightly different way? What would like your career has been exceptional, and that's uh, like you've lived the, the beyond, like you've said, uh, your dreams and beyond the dreams of most people who are growing up considering a life in professional support, uh, professional sport. But what would the the 17 or 18 year old Paul McShane at Manchester United, who's being heaped praise upon by the likes of Alex Ferguson, has you know been spoken about in the terms that he did about you. What would a 17 or 18 year old think about the career of Paul McShane now? Um, well, back then, you know, I wanted to play for Manchester United. I wanted to be in the first team of Manchester United and winning, winning the Premier Leagues and winning Champions Leagues and stuff. But you know, as I said before, football careers don't always always go to plan. Yeah. And um, you know, cons considering that, you know, as a uh, at United as well, as as time went on, I was sort of considered not big enough to be a centre half, not not quick enough to be to play at the top level, um, not particularly technical enough to play at the top level. But I ended up I ended up doing that, and that was. You know that was through sheer sheer determination. That was through sheer uh, wanting to actually do it and having the desire to to work for it. So as as I look back, you know, I'll 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 definitely look back and and think, you know, I, I I've I've done all right in the end. But you know, seventeen, eighteen, bright eyed boy coming out from Ireland, and you know, it's all sort of you know rosy. And mm. um, yeah, I would have thought like you know Manchester United week in week out, winning trophies. Um, that would have been the ideal, and anything other than that would have probably, probably deemed as, as as a failure. But you know, when you when you when you think about the amount of players out there and the competition in football, um, you know, it's quite it's you know it's a very small percentage I get to do that. Um, but I played in the Premier League, played international football, and um, played in an FA Cup final, uh, got promotions and stuff. So, um, yeah, I'd be I think I think I've done okay. You've done exceptionally well, um, and as I said, lived out the dreams that very few people get to do. Um, do you think that in in some ways like that you mentioned about joys and then the going to United, like it's such a, you're going to one of the arguably the biggest club on the planet, and it's such an unfair benchmark for the rest of your career. And like you know, is that something that you think, like in hindsight, of course you're always going to go and the opportunity is there and you want to make success with, but in hindsight. Like the benchmark is so high that everything else looks like a step downwards. In actual fact, like it's really an incredible, incredible achievement, incredibly, uh, incredible success. Your career. Yeah, well, I never really, I never really thought of it as a as a step down. I I felt as if it was a step up moving away from uh, Manchester United, just because at the time I'd I'd gone I'd gone on loan to to Brighton 
Um, and I've played I've played over forty games at nineteen and twenty. Mm. Um, ended up getting Player of the Year there. Um, so to go back to Manchester United and um, if I wasn't going to be with the first team every day, I probably would have been tr- playing with the reserves and stuff. And I knew I needed to crack on. I needed to strike while the while the iron was hot. And I was you know I wanted to get start my senior career. So yeah, I made I made the decision to to leave Manchester United, and I yeah I didn't I didn't see that as a step down. I, I felt as if it was at the time uh, definitely a step up, just with the way things were going at United. There was you know there was great competition there. You know I wasn't going to play in the first team straight away. It was there was there was Rio, Vidic, um, you know Shazy, Brownie. Um, so it's and then like around my age there was you know uh, Jared PK, Johnny Evans. Uh, Ryan Shawcross. So the competition was really, really strong, mm. and um, you know, I thought I thought to crack on with my career, I needed to, I needed to, I needed to leave and and you know find my way in the senior game. And um, you know, I sort of I cut the rope myself from Manchester United, and I you know I, I didn't look back. I didn't look back at United. Sometimes I'd actually tr- you know try and forget that I, was, <laughs> that I was actually there, just because I just wanted to you know totally focus on on now making a, a career for myself. Wow, that's mad. Yeah, it's yeah, and that's, that's, it's only in the last few years probably that I've actually, you know, really sort of, you know, spoke about United and spoke about actually the, the great time that I actually had there because, you know, I, I I I didn't want to leave, but you know, I I I, I had to I had to from from my own career and stuff. Mm. Um. So yeah, it's just as it's just when you when you get older and you and you and you look back, you know, you do you do a lot of stupid things when you're younger, and you, you think a lot of stupid things. But yeah, at the time, I just wanted to to cut cut ties with United and and um, yeah, just just crack on with with, with forcing a career for myself. Yeah, and as I said, it's been an incredible career. And um, you know, as you said, and I'm repeating, you're not done yet, and there's more ahead. And you're at League One Rochdale at the minute. You're injured at the minute, is that right? Yeah, yeah, I'm injured at the minute. Yeah, what's wrong with uh, you? I've got a groin. I've never had a groin injury before. I think I'm ticking off all the muscles that I haven't injured at the minute. <laughs> so this is like, yeah, pectineous, pectineous muscles. I think I should be a physio when I'm finished. I know all the muscles and now all the rehab and that. Um, but yeah, so it's a pectineous muscle in the groin. Um, basically, we're passing it too much at Rochdale, I think. And I t- <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I've just, I've just tweaked it. It's, it's, it's annoying because it's only a three week, three week, four week job. And, um, I'm back training. I'm back training now, but it's, we don't have a game for another ten days or so. But um, you know, I'm, I'm still I'm still dying to get back. I still love still love competing every every weekend. Um, yeah, so I don't I don't know if that will that will ever ever die. But I'll 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 keep going as 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 long as I can. And you know, other than that, other than picking up the odd injury, I I feel pretty fit myself. And you know, I I do everything I can to be prepared for games and training. And um, yeah, you know, I'm not um. I'm not sort of taking my foot off the gas and 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 getting getting fat. I'm um, I'm staying fit and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm I'm I love getting ready for games. Yeah, you might be knocking on Brian Barry Murphy's door shortly and saying, "Listen, I've got no pad out here. I've been giving this some thought. Put me in, <laughs> put me in, put me in, coach." <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, no, I don't. I think the notepad. Well, the, no, the notepad hasn't retired yet. You know, I still, you know, still take a few notes if I have to. I have, have a chat with somebody, but um, yeah, no, I wouldn't do that to Brian. You know, Brian's. Brian's been fantastic. You know, he's a, he's a he's a good, good good forward thinking manager, and he's quite a modern day manager. And uh, it's been it's been enjoyable. It's been a it's, it's been a decent uh, project at Rochdale, and I'm you know I'm, I'm I'm glad to glad to be a part of it. Just um you know start start need we need to start turning good performances into wins, but um hopefully hopefully that will come. Yeah, he's finding his feet. Obviously, manager uh, as a manager, just that's his his first gig. What do you mean he's forward thinking and progressive? Just the way we're playing. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of tactics going on within the game, and um, a lot of rotations in possession. Defensively, we're we're well set up, and it's um, you know, he's he's quite he's quite open as well. Opens the floor a lot to, to players, and he's open minded around the training ground. And um, you know, it's not really a you know, no, it's not really an old school sort of dictatorship. It's uh, it's quite open and a, a relaxed that atmosphere to to play in. Um, but he's, you know, he's he's very very, he's got a lot of intelligence in the game, and he's he's got some good good coaches around him, and it's at times when we when we're when we're on it, you know, we we play some really really good stuff, 
and it's um yeah it's enjoyable when it when it all clicks i know you're doing stuff like trying not to say no to anything at the minute and doing mad stuff like reading your star signs as to how your uh, how your future is going to go are you are you chipping in around the the training ground with all that bank of knowledge over the years or is that something that you're leaning towards or no um yeah well i've done i've done me i've done me a and b license um with the fai and um yeah i'm trying to keep me eye in with the coaching but it's tough now with covid um mm. no it's hard to get down to the academy um, but I, I definitely, yeah, I definitely have one eye on that. Um, but it's, you know, I'm just trying to keep everything open at the minute. Um, coaching would definitely, well, I think it would definitely interest me. Sometimes I don't know. Sometimes I think yes. Sometimes I think no. Um, I look at, you know, I always look at even, you know, managers in the past, and I look at Brian now and think, you know, what would I do if I was in that situation? And, mm. You know, a manager, it's, it's a tough gig, like it really is. I think it's, you've got to be twenty four seven, and. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You know, with the, with the, I've got I've got a little one now, and with all these interviews that I'm doing now on the circuit, on the circuit. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm. Uh, yeah, the missus is going mad. You know, I'm. Uh, I'm getting away with murder at the minute. But um, yeah. So it was man. If managers twenty four seven, it can be. Mm. Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. But I'd I'd love to give it a bash. I think I probably will go down that that road. Um. But yeah, I need to. I need to start getting back into my, getting a few sessions of, of coaching under my belt and and then and see where it takes me. What, um, I did, uh, speaking of progressive managers, and I was interested to hear you say that you've done your groin because you're playing a bit too much football. I don't know how that would work in Stephen Kenny's setup at the minute. What have you, uh, what have you made he's, of the few games he's been in charge in terms of the advancement of style of that Ireland team? Yeah, I think, well, it's, it's, I think it's okay. It's okay. Obviously, the results haven't been, haven't been great. But I think um, with, with what we've wanted as 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 a country, a, a lot of a lot of the fans wanted to see more possession-based stuff and more easy on the ice stuff. So I think you've to to change a, a philosophy and to change the culture of, of playing. I think you ha you have to sacrifice a few results. Um, so Steve, I think the last couple of performances have been have been decent, but we just couldn't we couldn't seem to put the ball in the back of the net. Mm. So, you know, I'm I'm really I'm really uh, interested to see how the next few games go and and see how he how how he can really stamp his his philosophy on the team. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think we we've got definitely you know got to got to give got to give him time, um, got to give time for the for the players to adjust. So you know, I'm I'm looking forward now to see to see how we got on tomorrow night and to see the up and coming games. Yeah, interesting times ahead. But needless to say, we've had lots of um, love flowing in for you. Um, a couple that I wanted to bring you away that we picked up on Twitter here in the last few minutes. One of them was about something I know that we've spoken to you about before. Uh, this one's from Keen, who says that your family's connected with Dublin Hurling and that Sean McShane, who's your dad, and uh, the brothers were known to be phenomenal Rohini and Dublin Hurlers, and we've spoken to you about that before. Um, so that's in from, from Keen there and, uh, and, and right and proper to bring it up. And another one here that I'm not so sure is right and proper to bring up, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I'll probably not maybe go into all the details here, but from Darren O'Dea, who you might be familiar with, who wants to know if we can ask you about the time that you jumped through the front room window and we tracked him down into a field uh, where he was eating something that he shouldn't have been. <laughs> Is that ringing? <laughs> you were e he says you were eating raw meat, which might ring a bell or two, I don't know. <laughs> well, is he all right, is he? <laughs> we well, might let... So you tracked me down in the field trying to eat. eat He's some saying the time that you jumped through the front room window and. Ah, uh, oh, that's Father Ted. That's uh, Henry Sellers. <laughs> Henry Sellers. That's Henry Sellers. <laughs> no, let him go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I, knew, I knew it'd be something Father Ted if it was Darren. I, he, he, yeah, we're, we're big Father Ted fans. Ah, listen, why wouldn't yeah. you be? I think that. Uh, but as as Keen said on that as well, me, me, me dad and me uncle. I just love. I have the golf day every every year. Well, up to last year, and I love when the Rahini boys come and and the uh, and a couple of the elfers tell a few stories about me da and my uncle. Crackers, like, you know, if it was cut, it was done in today in today's game, you'd be you'd be arrested. But mm. so I, lo I love the stories and I love the I love the Rahini lads coming coming down to play. Yeah, well, listen, it's a good note to uh, to leave it. I really enjoyed the last half hour in your company, Paul. Best of luck for, hopefully, that injury clears up in the not-too-distant future. You get back in the team, and uh, who knows what the next couple of years holds. But uh, for yeah. now, thanks a million. Cheers, Adrian. Thank you.